Hey everybody, Dennis Wilborn, the Active Trend Trader. Welcome to this week's session of Trade Your Way to Wealth. Got some really great stocks to look at today. I have a question for you before we get started though. Do you sometimes struggle controlling your emotions when you're trading or do your emotions get you in trouble when you are trading? Um, hang on to the end of today's session. I've got three tips on how to better manage your emotions to make you a more profitable trader. So let's jump into today's session. But first, up in that corner, there'll be a drop down that talks about the autopilot trading service. Uh, you really need to check this out. Currently, we're up on the S&P a little bit over 15% for the year. And uh, we do have a pretty good track record with it in that we have beat the S&P each of the last 10 years since we went public with what we offer in our training session. So with no further ado, though, let's jump into today's session. I think you'll find it really exciting. Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Swoboy, the Active Trend Trader. Welcome to Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom, uh, where we're going to talk about what's going on in the markets and the indexes. And we've got some stock picks. I have a three points, three action items you can take right now to reduce the uh, effect of emotions when you're trading. Uh, but one of our members, uh, Anil, or one of our stock pickers, Anil, uh, is in a, a, in a mastermind uh, conference with, and he, uh, he needs to show us what he has. Plus he has an extra pick um, and so, Anil, good morning, Anil. Good morning, Steve. Good, good morning. morning. Can you nice hear me okay? Here. Yep, we can hear you fine. And Great. so if, you, if anybody does have any comments, please drop them into the chat box. I do not monitor the questions and answers. So let's go ahead and get on over to Anil's pick. And Anil's pick today was one of my uh, really uh, favorite stock of mine is FTNT. So, What's going on with FTNT, and and are you buying now? Or are you waiting for a pullback? What's the story? No, I'm buying now. Actually, it's uh, my system gave me the signal actually last week, and I it pulled it back, and now it's uh, looks like it's recovering. So I'm I already bought it. Where did you buy it at? Uh, right wherever that. Line dipped and recover. Uh, In there? No, no. Go to go to today. Okay. Oh, you bought today. it today. Okay. Yeah, uh, right there at the line. Whatever. <clears throat> right there. I don't have my other notes in front of me. So I don't know the exact price, but it's about okay. right where your arrow is. So about three thirty. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Now, what's your expectations and where's your stop loss? Uh, my stop loss on this one is 5% and expectation I, uh, right around 365. Okay, so just go back up and hit out, knock out the uh, past eye. Yeah, this is a really good pick, uh, uh, Neil. I, I like I, it. Yeah, so do I. It's, uh, uh, it is holding up much better than the market. And... I think you've got some other things that are in your favor in that you're getting the longer term momentum shifting up. Right. That is, that is really a big, a big deal. And so now you said you had an extra, you had a bonus bonus. Yeah, my, my bonus stock is vertex. V -R no, you can't have that one. That was mine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't send you a text message and say, hey, that was my pick. And so, no, uh, I am looking at that. Uh, and, I, and I will share it before today's session is over. So, all right, Anil, if you need to bug out, please, you know, be, feel free. But thank you so much for your pick. And thank you for breaking away uh, 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 to be able to present for us. It just tells us, um, uh, it just basically you know, for everybody who's online, it shows you how much Anil really cares about getting in and sharing his knowledge with fellow traders. And so I, I applaud you for that. So go enjoy the rest of your webinar, okay? 
you no, know, thank you. Thank you very much for continuously inviting me. I'm learning a lot from you and having great fun. So okay, see, awesome. So, see you guys next week. Okay, thanks, Neil. All right, bye now. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the session. And uh, again, if you wanted to, the QR, QR code down here basically will basically hook you up in with the uh, Active Trend Trading free service, and you can register there and sign up for the basically register and get the free watch list I put out every week. So start your week, <clears throat> weekly review with the uh, Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom, Market Index Review, Stock Picks, uh, Trading Tips. The trading Tip is really good today. I think you're going to really enjoy it. And then uh, I encourage you, hey, please invite your friends to join us uh, for this session. Um, is, uh, you know, we traders kind of, are, are we tend to be a little bit quiet. We tend to be a little bit reserved most of the time. Uh, but please share it with somebody else who has like feelings, or not, not like feelings, but like interest, uh, who basically is trying to grow their wealth. Uh, I really encourage you to do that. So with no further, that, let's go ahead and jump into today's session. Uh, here's where I finished up February. Uh, basically, I'm if, if you recall the chart from last year, we really were struggling during the first part of the year, uh, just z uh, whipping all around and that kind of stuff. We're still getting a lot of that in the market. We're getting a lot of whippiness. And so my, my encouragement is do not be fooled with the, what the market's doing to us. One, there's a lot of head fakes. And uh, I encourage you, wait for the momentum shifts. Whatever you basically trade, uh, utilized for momentum, whether it be stochastics or MACD or TSI and the, or the market or the market forecast, the way we do with a think or swim uh, uh, platform, wait for the actual shift and sometimes even the crossover on momentum. And with the market in significant correction. It will save you a lot of, of, well, hopefully a lot of losses and also a lot of pain by waiting for those uh, uh, crossovers to take place. Because right now we're in no man's land, which we tend, you know, we tend to look at no man's man land as being a, basically a, uh, a, a place where you're going to get chopped up in the butcher shop and ground up and, and spit out. It's not very pleasant whatsoever. <laughs> so here's where we were last week. We're uh, uh, beating the market by about 14%. The market has fallen down today. And so we're, uh, uh, we're down slightly for the week, but we're still, we're now beating the market by even more. That's a comparison with the S&P. We have the NASDAQ from the highs of last year down about 16%, the Russell down about 18%. So both of those are on the fringe of being in bear market territory. Um, the war that's going on, uh, the you know, Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine is not helping us a lot. Uh, there's a lot of the inflation is not helping us a lot. I think we will find out more regarding how the Fed is going to continue to react to the inflationary news uh, on the uh, 16th of the month when the Fed meets again. So let's go ahead and jump in and look at the, uh, the uh, indexes. Then Steve can share his pick. He's got a couple of picks, and I've got some really good questions for Steve. Okay when we get to that point. So as we see what's going on last week, as I looked at the, uh, the session, we had kind of a, 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 we had a hammer last week, which is still in effect. Okay, that's positive. So price action can operate anywhere within the support of that wick and the Bullish reversal signal will remain in effect. That's the way you interpret those. At the same time, though, this is what I'm talking about. This momentum, while it's shifted a little bit, the sideways on the uh, uh, weekly for the market forecast, but look at the MACD. The MACD basically rolled over up here and is still pointing down. The, the uh, T 
TSI is still pointing down. And while we had a head fake, this is what I'll call a head fake, okay? This was a, a, a bullish reversal last, uh, last week, or week before last. Uh, this was on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, Thursday of last week. Uh, and it is still in effect, still. Uh, however, just be aware, we do not have a reversal signal in any of today, this week's candlesticks. We have it coming down and hitting a level of support, which we want to watch carefully. But it looks as if the market wants to maybe go back down and retest down a little bit lower, maybe into the midsection of that big green candle. Well, you know, and we will know more when it goes down there and test it. But right now, uh, that's the earliest I would be looking at a potential trade on the, uh, the spiders. And that's, again, down about the 421 level, uh, 422, 421 level, uh, if we fall down from there. Because right now, we're, we gap down uh, from yesterday's uh, reversal. Yesterday's reversal candle was not a re downside reversal candle, but it just it was a bearish type uh, candlestick. So that's what we've got going with that. What about the uh, NASDAQ? Whoops. NASDAQ looks kind of similar, maybe a little bit uglier. Um, NASDAQ came up, hit, and tried to break out of the downtrend line that we have lined up there that's been going on now since uh, the first part of January. Came back, tested at the 200-day moving average. Now we're rolling over and falling more. I would look at you know, the potential of some more downside on this, However, however, with that said, the momentum indicators are getting where they can't go much lower, but they can go some lower. But usually on the weekly chart, on the weekly charts, they hit, uh, if you see on the TSI, they tend to repel or bounce off of that 40, positive 42 line or negative 42 line, excuse me, and we're there. Same thing on the, go back to the last, Reversal. T the market forecast got all the way down to the, you know, just about to the 20 line. And then the MACD also uh, reversed out of that. And we're getting a similar type of formation. We had a one week reversal on the MACD uh, histogram. Uh, however, it has not shifted. We do not have a shift to the upside yet. Uh, so what am I looking at on the cues? The cues become interesting to me about the mids, again, the, the middle third of the Thursday of last week's candlestick. That's where it becomes interesting. And um, I will put in alerts at the top of that. Now, actually, alert kind of breaking down through this low here, uh, down to about here. And in that area, then I will look for a potential reversal signal but right now we don't have any. That'd be a tr trade to the upside. If I get a test back up into about the eight-day moving average here, I will look to potentially trade the Qs with options to the downside, or trade SQQ to the downside. And our and our uh, uh, autopilot trading members have been, you know, we've had a couple of good trades on SQQ uh, and picked up some really quick profits on those. And so last but not least, I've got IWM. And th the story's the same with each one of these. We now have prices moving back down below the moving averages. It is well below the, the 200, the 100, the 50. Came up and gave a, a challenge towards the 50 this past week. And now we're rolling back over. Where do I, you know, and I'm going to be patient with this. Where do I expect it to go? I expect it to potentially get all the way down to this level of 190.57, down to about 188.27. What's the number there? Actually, 187.92. And, and once I'm alerted that we've gotten into there, then I'll go and try to build a trade from that area on the Russell, either IWM or TNA. Matter of fact, I'm sitting, our premium uh, uh, autopilot trading members were sitting with, you know, you know, we're sitting with orders ready for TNA 
uh, if it happens to bottom out. So Steve, again, Steve, I think you're absolutely right. There's no big hurry to get into the market right now. And, uh, and um, are you more bullish, less bullish, or just kind of kind of neutral on the market right now? Immediately, I'm, I'm neutral or, or slightly bearish, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but longer term, I'm still very bullish. I think the market has been carving out a bottom since the middle of January. Okay. Uh, and, and nothing changes my perspective. I think it will resolve out in a bullish fashion, but a lot can, you know, there can still be more downside testing the prior low. You betcha. And I think the key, the key event is we don't, we can even undercut the prior low, but we don't want to see in this testing process, volume must remain low. Mm. If, 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 right if volume is sort of very modest, I think there's a good chance the resolution is upside. If volume, however, comes into the market as we go lower, it would be a, a big, a major red flag for me. Okay. So I think if we're carving out a bottom, it is not decided. The market is not yet decided. The bottom is done. Excellent. So I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that process to occur. I've recommitted my, you know, I've several times recommitted cash, but I've been quickly out. Yeah, you bet. The next yeah. commitment is, is longer term. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand that totally. Hey, one of the things I will point out to everybody is the Russell tends to occasionally get into these long term horizontal trading ranges that are definitely tradable, either with options and or switching over to the, the leverage ETFs. And as you can see, the, the new trading range that it's in is you know, basically <clears throat> mirrors the same type of price action we were getting last year, but it's just from a lower level. So, so take that and put that into your, you know, uh, into your analysis over the weekend and, and just say, hey, if it gets down into that area, that's where I'm interested. And if it doesn't, I'm not interested in it whatsoever. So Steve, um, here is the stock you gave me. You gave me, Nvidia. actually, you gave me four gave, stocks. Correct. And I, there's a bunch of them I'm watching. Okay. There's none of them, none of them are entries today. Okay. But, but okay. I, I, because, you know, the market, I think, is in the process of bottoming. As soon as the environment shifts clearly to the bullish side, okay. then I will start to make commitments. Nvidia is certainly one I'm watching. I like the fact that we're double bottom. Okay. Uh, we, we, we may come back down to a third bottom. We don't know. Uh, at the very minimum, we, we, we're doing a test of the, pro, of the previous bottom. Right. And I think it, anywhere in, in between that bottom and where we are currently would be a nice place to be buying stock. Okay. If I see a bullish reverse, reversal pattern. I like and, it. And, yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorites from a longer term perspective in terms of something I've been I've made a lot of money on Nvidia, and I think an opportunity is coming up. So, my question. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, there are others we can look at, but they all look pretty similar. Well, the question I have for you, and, and I think it was uh, ABGO, because ABGO was another one that you. Yeah. So, yeah. why Nvidia? Why was Nvidia your favorite pick rather than in? ABGO, uh, which maybe, is, part, and, it, sure, and the reason, let, let me finish, let me, mm -hmm. because ABGO is above its moving averages. Correct, correct. It's a stronger chart. Uh, okay. It's a big part of the NASDAQ index, and I think the NASDAQ is just currently lagging the, uh, the, the general market. And so gotcha. I'm not that anxious to buy, to buy into it. I'm watching it. Uh, okay. I, I, on a pullback, I would certainly consider buying it. Uh, but okay. it's something I'm watching. Uh, and I just arbitrary. I think NVIDIA speaks to me a little better. Uh, uh, I think there's prior bias. With right. Previous success with it. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're equivalent. They're one or the other or both or whatever you want to do it. I'm just not so anxious to jump back into tech. Okay. Although I did make an NVIDIA tech, which is, you know, if, I, if I'm going to take a tech stock, I something like NVIDIA is... I think fundamentally uh, stronger because it's you, it's chips they use 
like so many different industries. Got it. So I, I, I kind of like it. Yeah. So, and then uh, I think, what is this? Car, uh... car, car gurus. I just like this kind of a chart. I love strong, strong yeah. charts that take off on, on strong moves. It's pulling back. I'm looking at for to hold somewhere between the eight and the 20, give me a reversal sick candle or, st or pattern. And I'd be looking at a long side trade. Gotcha. Certainly not a trade today. And so I agree wholeheartedly. And, uh, and so, but the yeah, right thing there, that, that would be a nice level if we got there. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Is the thing I want to drive home for everybody is that while the market is showing exceptional weakness, which it's showing right now, is is it's it's a good time to keep your powder dry, which which in terms, if you're not familiar with that kind of term, it means cash is a you know is a position. Also, you can stay in cash. And then wait for the prices to come to you. That way you pay wholesale rather than retail, but you spend the time defining where do I want to buy something? And then, uh, and then adjust from there. And you'll be surprised how many times the prices will come back to the technical level that you said, oh, yeah, that's where I wanted to buy it. So I know... Steve practices that. I practice that, and and Neil also practices that type of a, a form a approach. Absolutely, absolutely. And then Barry just mentioned that in today's news, ABGO has prospective business with Apple. Uh, didn't have a chance to read it yet, though. Okay, cool, excellent. Uh, so no, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Steve. And then my pick this week is VRTX. For a couple of different reasons, and you can probably guess. One, we got one heck of a nice pullback from a four, three week down pattern, a nice uh, flag pattern, and it broke out from that. Uh, VRTX from from um, July 2020 actually went into just a total, you know, massive dump. Right. It reversed, still strong ratings, and now has. It has, it has come up to the top of, you know, part of the top of the IBD rating system. And I love this pattern that we have from last week. Bullish, you know, so we have a bullish engulfing of last week's candlestick. And so what am I looking at? I'm looking at a potential pullback into approximately the midsection of today's candle, if today's candle closes where it's at. Um, that would give me a potential that if I picked it up at the midsection there, even if I took a, a, you know, a stop loss all the way back down at the bottom of this swing low here, it's still a, a stop loss keeps me within my rules of no more than a 5% stop loss. Uh, the other thing that uh, uh, on this one uh, for the autopilot members and the premium active trend trading members, we will be talking um, about this one at the uh, uh, the final hour, which starts, of course, at the top of the hour, where we talk about, and, and I, I have some potential option uh, trades and a potential uh, uh, review of what we might want to do with VRTX. So that's what I've got. Uh, Quick that's, note, Dennis. What's that? Quick note on that. Quick note yeah. on that. A comment. I got out of it today, but I, I had a wonderful entry and re reaching a target into resistance, I decided to exit, but I am looking for a re-entry. I love it, any yeah. Any kind of a pullback there. I love it. Yeah, the other thing, you know, I, I guess I'm looking at it at the volume. Volume's not all that great for be taken up, but it's got a lot of good things in that the sure. momentum is, is in fact shifting on the daily basis. And it shifted a long time ago on the, on the weekly basis, but it's still showing very positive. Yeah. So. And okay. Another note: If you're an option trader, it's not great liquidity. It's got fairly wide bid ask spread. Yes. Yeah. And, and I was no weeklies. I I would no. It does have weeklies. I'm not sure. I'm going to check again. Well, I'm I'm no. I'm, I'm oh, looking at the, I'm no, looking at the right, option. No, you're right. right. You're right. It does. It does. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. Okay. It has so, weeklies. It has weeklies, but poor liquidity in in terms of trying to get fills. I find it challenging. Okay, I'm going to do real quick to BTU. Uh, who, wants, who wants Solomon? Excellent, yeah. excellent. Uh, I like the energy, energy sector. 
Uh, it, you know, it, it basically, yeah, it is it is blown out above the, uh, and so what you're looking at is go find your level that it broke out from, which is about the 1962 level, uh, and then look for, you're looking for a pullback towards the breakout area to get into the trade. That may be a pullback into the eight or the 20 day moving average. That's good. I like That's it. A B B V. With, yep. with, along, you know, with your comments, I like it on a pullback. I don't like it today. Yeah, uh, I have no idea what this entity is and what it does. Abvi, uh, I would have to do the stock oh. checkup on it, uh, uh, Solomon. And yeah. right now, it looks like it's on a nice little trip up the uh, up the light. Fantastic. It does not. What kind of? Yeah, it has plenty of. Um, yeah, uh, I almost sent you this one today also. Okay. But I, I said I'm looking for a pullback, so I decided not to. Yeah, for me it's a little bit extended. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch this until I get some kind of a, a, a good I, I, looking likewise. good looking pullback. Yeah, I mean if you're in the I, trade, I, you know, depending on where you entered it, you can set up your your uh, uh, stop. Major drug company. Ah, okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's what we've got. And so, ah, that does it for today, guys. We're going to basically bust on over and take a look at, uh, just a reminder that all traders should paper trade, or all materials are presented for training purposes. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to leave you with is um, how many are impacted negatively by emotions when you're trading? Besides me, am I the only one who's negatively, you know, uh, negatively affected by, by emotions? Uh, I know the answer to that there is no. Is. Yeah, I agree. So here's three things you can do to lessen and or manage your emotional quotient um, and reduce the effect of emotions on your trading. One, plan your trades when the market is closed. And be very diligent with that, identifying where you're going to enter, where you're going to exit, and what, how you, you know, how many shares you're going to buy. And then two, put in a conditional order reflecting what you just planned out. And then number three, and I think is number three is, um, I think one of the mo most challenging is if you do steps one and step two, there are still you still have to have a response for the voices of fear that come up and say, you're going to miss this trade or go out. Don't, you know, we don't need no stinking rules. Go ahead and take the trade. So again, have a response for the voices of fear. <laughs> what Absolutely. do you think of those? <laughs> I love that. Okay. Well, hey, do you struggle with not, speaking of that, fear of not knowing where and how to exit a position? Mark Minavini says, this is one of the biggest challenges for traders in that they do not have a plan for how to get out of a trade. And therefore, they just wind up, you know, stuck in the, uh, like a deer in the headline. But autopilot traders, we do have a plan. And I'm really pleased with what happens with the autopilot trading. There's a, uh, 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 a QR code. You can just uh, take a snapshot of that. I encourage you to take a test flight in the for three months in the autopilot trading uh, system, because what the system did for us is it pulled us totally out of almost every stock that we're in, except for one, and now we're we're fat with cash, ready for when the market does reverse, and so. Uh, that's uh, basically it for today. So remember, patience and persistence. So when I chose those words at the beginning of the year, I didn't know how true they were. I, I didn't realize how true they were going to be. Steve, thank you very much, my friend. My pleasure. I look forward to when we can uh, 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 finally get to meet, you know, meet in person again. And hopefully they will remove. I mean, L.A. took away the mask mandate. And hopefully the, uh, the, the state of Hawaii will do the same thing. I know that they're going to get rid of the, um, um, you know, having to have your testing and all that kind of stuff to go out in restaurants. So, so aloha, trade well and prosper. Mahalo. God bless you guys. And uh, we'll be looking for you again next week. Thanks for joining us. 
And aloha. Thanks, Steve. 